and today I want to tell you something about the plains, uh, Native American plains Indian shield, as it is. This was born in the era uh, before the reservation era, so when the people were wild and free. <laughs> um, it is something special. It's uh, not. It's not common for all Native American people in this period, in this era. Um, but this is, as most, or it's, it's a typical style of a shield um, worn by horsemen, by riding people, riding uh, in battles. Um, other shields from the Pueblo, for example, from the Southwest are made not directly in this way because um, there were other reasons, like these were, these people quite often were going by feet and not with a horse, but these are designed for horsemen. And at first to say is that these shields were done on a, a circle of rawhide. This rawhide mostly came from the neck of a bison bull, mostly. Um, it was cut as what was uh, freshly skinned and then prepared that it loses the hair and then they have a small mound of, of earth where it's covering the, the rawhide was laid on and then with the heat with, with uh, hot stones for example uh, this rawhide was shrunken and dried and then it was it became thicker this here is just made from a, from a from a circle of normal rawhide. It's not sh shrunken. But what you can see is that this is the rawhide under it, yeah? And it's it's not uh, tan skin, but it's uh, rawhide. So then uh, these, later on, these rawhide shields were painted. And after that, they got a cover. This is what you see here. It's uh, this um, leather, this um, uh, tanned leather, native tanned leather, and then it's uh, covered around and you could remove this outer skin of, uh, of the shield. And this was not done um, for normal things, but when these people, these men went to war, they sometimes uncovered the shields because the protective power that were from these, from these designs under the cover. The covers were painted too. And sometimes they got all these decorations, like we see here, this is flap from, from woolen cloth or from leather or feathers paint, uh, pinned on, or these uh, bags, little bags from, that we had, had herbs inside for better protection, uh, spiritual protection of the warrior. What you see then on, and this is what I actually wanted to show you, is uh, these, there's a large loop and there is a small loop. And I had seen this several times and it seems that this is done quite often. Um, first time I saw this um, at an exhibition in Hamburg many, many years ago, maybe 20 years ago, or more than 20 years ago, where they put a mirror in the, behind the shield that you could look at the back from the shield. Um, but you also see something similar here. Uh, this is a painting from Catlin originally, and it's a Salk Indian. And you see the, the, the long loop where he has the shield here. You see also a different painting of the, of the shield. And it, it, this means a special thing for him. These uh, paintings, way of paintings, often came in visions and whatever, and dreams. And uh, <clears throat> this were, they were protected for the warrior, for his special power. And you have here you have an Assiniboine. He's maybe wearing the, the, the shorter loop to hold uh, the shield. This was a painting from Maximilian Zuvit. And then we have here a guy named Keokuk. It's also a Sauk chief. 
you see the shield you see here in the back and he maybe has uh, wearing the long loop and just uh, have the, the short loop um, in his hand this is uh, the way why I wanted to show it to you it's uh, the special shields they have made com uh, they're, they're made for horsemen for warriors riding and this was typical for the Peruvian plains uh, natives not for the Pueblo for example. The Pueblo had sometimes two loops here just for holding in hand for, for going around the arm but in the Peruvian plains where the people were riding this makes totally sense and they wore the shield they, they were riding yeah? so they always needed their hand, hands free for operating or for riding and they had this loop around their shoulders why not like this <laughs> because it's always it, it's it has it, it it gets it away as it should not get but when you have it in back it's much easier to operate you will see this the same construction also on bow cases on plain bow cases um, and when it's you are on a battle and you have to operate the shield very fast to the direction where, where uh, an arrow is coming from you take the other loop here and then you can you can protect yourself from from the back and you you don't have to um, go from your from your horse or wherever you have this in your hand and you can just protect uh, yourself from the arrows from your enemy and this is why this uh, construction at the, this period, at this era, totally made sense with the long loop and the short loop. Um, today, we are not speaking about the Indian, the Plains Indians or the Native Americans because it's totally bullshit. Um, all these items have a special meaning and were designed that they protected the people and that they made totally sense uh, when they were used. So we often have to, when we see something, we have to think about how they were used and not just, uh, ah, it looks fancy. No. Nope. Um, today, Native Americans, Northern Plains warriors, or these regalias came mostly very much seen in powwows. And here we have a men's traditional dancer and this is um, the shields today have other functions and these are used in dances but not for protection anymore but because they are um, belonging to a regalia and then it, this design change um, I, I made this shield here just with raw hide it's very lightweight but you cannot protect yourself from uh, from any um, arrow that's coming to it because it's just a thin raw hide or leather and uh, around the loop stretched around the loop and then the, um, having painted and um, with all these decorations and here from this from this circle of willow or of rotan um, the, the these two strings are going and then I have the two loops here but so the two loops for the arm. You are, you also will find um, similar shields made from plywood or from uh, 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 leather that was used in, in saddleries, heavy leather, and then just with two holes and around the uh, around the arm. But this is not a traditional or historical design of a horse fighting warrior. But it totally makes sense today. So these things also develop and were made that they are functional for today or for the people that are using them. And then, simply to show you a totally different design, um, I have my, my Aztec warrior here and uh, these warriors um, this is, these are dancers that are normally dancing in Mexico City today and on the Zocalo. So and they have, 
totally different design, but it's not the design, it's uh, a construction, it's one of the constructions, but you see this construction quite often, and they use uh, thick leather or plywood under it, so it's covered with leather, and then you see these cross strings. And this is a design that is quite often used by dancers, by Aztec dancers. So maybe you have learned something new today and that Native Americans, you have much to speci specify, to, to be much more specific what time period you're speaking about, we are speaking about and what these people were doing and what these shields should be for and should be used for if they are dancing shields or if they were used in war. All this gives a special design and is for, for this special use. So you cannot even speak about the shield of Native Americans. They are all different and they have uh, the design follows the function. So I hope you learned something new today and maybe see you soon in my channel and yeah, look at the other videos and goodbye.